Hi, I'm Dr. Mimi Guarneri, and I'm Medical Director at Guarneri Integrative Health here at Pacific Pearl La Jolla. And it is my pleasure today to sit with my friend and colleague, Claire D'Andrea. And Claire and I go back now, would you say 20 years, Claire? 20 years. Long time. (laughs) Long time. We've been on a journey to bring health and healing to all of the lives that we serve, Mm -hmm. all of the people we have taken care of. So uh, it's been uh, transitions and changes. I mean, Claire, you started as a nurse, a nurse um, researcher. Right. Nurse research. I started as a regular uh, staff nurse. I worked in ICU. I've worked in home health. I've worked in hospice. I've done uh, research in nursing. And then I um, landed with you at Integrative Medicine, so, which right. is my passion. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I think I know a li- enough about you to know that you really come out of a background of being connected to the earth, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And um, nature and food, and food is medicine, and uh, you're a healer. I mean, you, you, may, you may carry the degree of nurse, mm-hmm. um, but certainly for my patients that I have you work with, they, uh, you're best identified you. as a healer. <laughs> and, and we lived out in the woods when my children were little, and I did. I grew all my own vegetables. I um, made my own bread. I tried to raise them healthy and give them a great start in life. Uh, when I worked at the birthing center, I just always felt that that connection with, with individuals was the most important thing. And working in the hospital, having worked in the cath lab and ICU, there's just this coldness to it that didn't resonate with me. So um, embracing uh, the patient and connecting with them is what I love and what I think helps people to heal best. And you've taken this um, on to really help women with heart disease. I mean, you took scripts from having no program Mm -hmm. uh, with Women Heart to really, you've really been so instrumental, and I think you even served on their board. I did, I did. And I started out because you said to me, we're seeing a lot of young women that have heart disease. What are you going to do about it? And I thought, well, yeah, you did. And I was like, oh. And so I started a focus group at Scripps um, Integrative Medicine. And, and then you went to a conference and you heard about Women Heart. And so I became involved with Women Heart, which is a national coalition to support women living with heart disease and at risk for heart disease. And so I've run the support group at Scripps for the past 14 or 15 years. And the past six years, I served on the board of directors for Women Heart. I'm passionate about helping women um, learn about their diagnosis, uh, learn how to take care of themselves in a better way, but more importantly, how to heal from the inside and connect with who they are and understand the the stress and the emotions, as well as the, you know, the diet and the exercise and all of that. And I think what's really important is that many people think cardiovascular disease is a man's disease. And certainly when I was trained, we were taught it was men that had heart attacks. We were taught women had breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death in women. And women frequently show up to an emergency room And sometimes even with a classic story of chest discomfort or chest tightness or shortness of breath, and they get dismissed because uh, they look like you or they look like me, and we don't look like the picture of cardiovascular disease. No, and that's very true. And 19 years ago, 20 years ago, um, I had not very classic symptoms. I was fatigued. I had shoulder ache and and some jaw pain, but I also had dental surgery, so I thought my jaw pain was from that. And I was really blessed that I moved to California. Um, I was having all these symptoms in in Massachusetts, and when I moved here, uh, I'm one of the lucky ones because I ended up getting to see a wonderful primary care female physician who then referred me to you. Even though I had a normal EKG, I didn't have the classic symptoms. Um, many women aren't as lucky. And I saw you, and within three days, I was in the cath lab and had I, st- I had my stent put in. So I was only 45, and I had no family history of early heart disease. 
And, and I look at the labs from the day that I was diagnosed, and I think my LDL back then was 99. Mm -hmm. um, my cholesterol was really good, and I even believe my triglycerides, where I never smoked, I'm not a diabetic. So um, I didn't have the classic symptoms, but I'm lucky. Many women are not as lucky as me, and they get to the emergency room, they're turned away when they could have gotten treatment right away and they end up going home and having a heart attack. So right. it's so important. It, it's really important. And, um, and we'll just take a minute, because I know there are going to be women watching this video, one, to recognize that um, many women think, oh, because I have my mammogram, oh, I had my pap smear, I'm okay, I don't have to do anything else. Mm -hmm. And uh, that women may present very differently. You said that discomfort in the teeth, discomfort in the neck, uh, between the shoulder blades is a classic. Mm -hmm. Or just feeling fatigued, like, like I was. Like you were, yeah. uh, really is a call to go and get checked. And, and we both would uh, beg, literally, anyone yeah. mm -hmm. to uh, make sure they go and see a physician and get properly evaluated. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they say uh, that. God gives us things uh, that can sometimes make us stronger. Mm -hmm. And I really think uh, this, ha this, you know, propelled you to get on the path of helping other women through yeah. Women Heart. Yeah. And now I think it's the health coaching, which you're doing with us here at Pacific Pearl. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about that okay. because I think your own journey makes you a better coach because you had to learn how to meditate, and you had to learn how to eat, and how to take care of your physical body, your emotional yes. body, and all and all of these things. And and now you're a health coach. So tell us what that's about. That was a journey in itself, and um, dealing with your own health issues makes you stronger. Um, I look at it as a blessing uh, that that I ended up having heart disease because I grew from that. I did learn to meditate. I did learn to. Um, journal and offer gratitude every day and I participate in yoga and I try to eat well. Um, the integrative nurse coaching spoke to me because I think that as nurses we can do a whole lot more to help our patients. And, and what I find with the, the coaching is that you're meeting one-on-one -on -one and it's a journey for the client or the patient. It's not about me, it's about that person. And it's not what I think that they need, but it's helping them to explore um, these avenues that I used or what other people use and understand in their own innate wisdom what it is that they need to do and how they can help themselves and set their own goals. It's, I'm just there as a facilitator to help and collaborate with them. Well, and, and what I like as a cardiologist is that you still have this nurse background, mm -hmm. this um, ICU experience, and uh, if any of my patients what to say to you, gee, when I walk, I get tightness and pressure in my chest, you're going to right away say, hey, go see Dr. G, give Dr. G a call. Right. And that's not true of all coaches, right? Most right. coaches don't have the kind of background. You're a nurse and a coach, and that's a unique combination. That's a great combination because nurses have that medical background and they understand physical symptoms and they know who to refer to and it's not just about me working with a client, it's about me helping them to understand their needs but also having the wisdom and the knowledge to refer them to a psychiatrist or an orthopedist or to a cardiologist or anyone that they need to see. So the whole uh, nurse uh, coaching program is really to get people to look at their lives, would you say, and to decide what's important and meaningful for them, and then to how do they bring about health? Um, how would you describe it? I mean, I, I'm, again, I'm sending you a very tough patient. I yeah. just want you to know. I have a really <laughs> tough one coming your way. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm curious how you're going to handle him uh, when he... Uh, you know, when he, he can't do a lot of the things that I've asked him to do or won't do a lot of the things that I've asked him to do? It's a great question, and um, it will be an exploration between the, the patient and I. Um, I will start out each session. It's uh, with an awareness practice. An awareness practice would be, uh, could be a breathing technique. It could be a guided imagery. It could be a visualization about tuning into a particular part of their body, um, going through the systems of their body and visualizing them, and then trying to understand what part of body is speaking to them. 
once we establish the awareness um, practice, then we'll move on to what they feel that they need to work on, what their goal is, whether it's work-life balance, whether it's stress management, whether it's nutrition or a complete lifestyle change. We'll work together to uh, create SMART goals, which would be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timed. Um, so it's really letting uh, me doing a lot of inquiry in questioning the client, but also being willing to sit quietly while they share their story and their perspective. Because in a patient's story, we learn a lot about their history and who they are, and we can help guide them um, or offer suggestions. I think some of these awareness practices are really, really important because I found for myself, uh, if I journal, mm -hmm. you know, if I just say a word of how I'm feeling today and I just start writing, frequently I'll think, oh, I have nothing to write right now. And then a whole story will come out yes. that takes me to, in a place that helps me to understand, oh, this might be why I'm worried about this, or this might be why I'm fearful about that, or, you know, and I know for a lot of our patients, food has emotional meaning, right? Oh, yes. And, and most of us are not aware of, of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Journaling is one of my favorite things, mm -hmm. and I never did it early on in my diagnosis. Um, I like to suggest to clients and patients that, and even the women heart patients uh, or in the group support, is at night just write one word that you're grateful for. And instead of worrying about what is going on for the day or worrying about your illness or anything, um, writing that one word of gratitude can help set the tone for your sleep. So helping clients and patients identify different things that they could do. It could be music, it could be journaling, it could be meditating. Um, we all respond differently to different things, but writing has become my passion. And five years ago, I started getting up real early in the morning, meditating, and then journaling. And so much comes out. Um, things that I didn't even know were inside of me. And it's, and it's kind of wonderful to experience that. And I keep all my journals, and I go back and read them. And I'm not afraid if anybody sees them. Some people have that fear. Well, and you can always say, this is my private, private. journal, mm -hmm. please don't read it. Right. Um, but I think what you're saying is really important, that there are things inside of us, as Louise Hay would say, the issues in the tissue. Mm -hmm. We hold things we don't even know what we're holding. And sometimes just by writing, it becomes this huge relief, and we understand ourselves better. It's like peeling away the layers of an onion. Yeah. We get deeper and deeper within to ourselves and we understand ourselves in a different way. And that's been a big part of my journey um, for me. So Claire, you are a mom. Mm -hmm. Now you are a grandma. Yes. You have also lived the life of a heart patient. Yes. You have been uh, a leader in women's heart and mm -hmm. Uh, running support groups and sharing your journey and helping women uh, to to heal. Mm -hmm. Now you're a health coach, yep. and you have one more thing hidden in your box, uh, which is you are a healing touch practitioner. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want you to spend a few minutes just talking about uh, healing touch, if you would, because when I start to think about the combination of things, the ability to be a coach to help people get to the deeper levels of what's going on with them, and then to be a healing touch practitioner, that's just magic. It is magic. And for me, um, I've always believed in, in touch. Um, and I knew that in touching, um, it made people feel better. And so when I moved to California and I took my first healing touch lesson uh, class with Rowney, Pritten, and King, um, I felt like I was home. I felt like I was home because what I learned and the energy that I felt and the self-healing that, that I encompassed um, opened me up in a way that I, I can't even explain. Um, but I now use Healing Touch, which is a bioenergy uh, therapy or a modality. Um, it's either touching a, a, an individual in particular places or moving your hand gently over their energy field. And it helps to balance and relax individuals. But in doing that, you can also um, oftentimes release some deep things that you said, you know, the, the issue was in the tissue, and it could be in the energy field. 
And so in the use of healing touch, I see it as a release of blocked energy through the chakras, through the meridians. And it helps individuals to um, peel away those layers so they, they feel better and they start to uh, make changes in their life. It certainly did for me. And I'm just thrilled that you're doing uh, Healing Touch for our patients here at Pacific uh -huh. Pearl, as well as nurse coaching. I am going to make a plea that you start a women's heart group here okay. as well. And I just want to make people aware that in Western medicine, we have all these systems we talk about, right? So we say neurology, the neurologic system, the lymphatic system, the cardiovascular system, right? And... Now we're talking about the cannabinoid system because we're talking about medical marijuana and CBD. No one ever learned about the cannabinoid <laughs> no. system mm -hmm. and no one uh, in Western medicine really learned about what, what you're calling the energy system or the biofield. But in um, other cultures, it's, it's part, of, part of health, right? right. So right. if you go to India, it's called prana. And if you go to China, it's called chi. Mm -hmm. And you go to Japan, it's called ki. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all about life. Right. And it's a system that's well recognized and studied. And uh, yet in Western medicine, just like with the cannabinoid system, people are just starting to talk about it. Um, we're really pushing people to understand the biofield system and the energy system as well. So yeah. I'm thrilled that you're doing that. So if I was to have um, a health coach session with you, uh -huh. how, how long would it take? What can I expect? Would you be calling me on the phone to make sure I'm taking my vitamins? I mean, what would you be doing with me? So the initial <laughs> one, you would receive a, um, a wellness assessment form. In the wellness assessment form, um, it has psychosocial uh, on it, meaning it talks about your uh, spiritual, your body, your mind, um, your social aspects of your life, you know, where you live, who you live with, and your environment. Um, and not only your physical, um, like exercise and nutrition, um, all aspects of your life. And after you complete the survey, you come to the first visit, and we will review it together. And through that, you, the client, or you, would identify what it is that you would like to work on, perhaps based on what your physician said you needed to work on. Um, and then we would do our awareness practice. If need be, we, if the first session is usually an hour and a half. Um, we can do phone uh, coaching, and I've done that, and that was quite effective, which I was surprised that uh, doing awareness practice on the phone, people would have such great results with that. Um, so we could do follow-ups on the phone. We could do in-person here at the Pearl, um, and we would work on, on things that come up in each session. So what the client thinks the issue may be, it may shift and change in a session, and the goals may shift and change based on their needs at the moment in, in that time. And I'm very excited that, uh, you know, we do a lot of what's called MDND comprehensive assessments, mm -hmm. where uh, new patients come in and they sit in a room with a medical doctor, a naturopathic doctor, and we look at the whole picture, 90 minute appointment, arrange all the tests, start an initial program, but you're going to be part of that now with uh, helping us with some health coaching uh, for our clients, our new clients especially. That's really important, yeah. so thank you. Thank you. Anything else you would add? Claire, you I am just thrilled to be back working with you. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor. It's an absolute honor. And it's an absolute honor to be able to work one-on-one -on -one with individuals, to do the healing work, to do the coaching, um, and to help, help patients and women heal from whatever it is that they are diagnosed with, um, and to have the ability to work with such amazing physicians, naturopaths, and uh, acupuncturists that you have here. So Great. Well, thank you. And uh, you hit the nail on the head. Um, to be in the position we're in, whether it's a doctor mm -hmm. or a nurse, uh, people come to us usually to alleviate suffering. And to be able to be in a position where we can contribute to the healing and the health creation for someone is indeed an honor. And I know you feel, as I do, that medicine is a service. It's not a job. That is right? true. Yeah. So, thank you, Claire. Thank you. Love you. I love you, too. <laughs>